UK. Hi everyone, this is Maria Hocking, the UK. Oh God, God Deborah. <laughs> I'm gonna start again, right? Okay, <laughs> I'll edit that bit out. Okay. Hi everyone, this is. I'm gonna start again. Sorry. Hi everyone, this is Maria Hocking, the UK Life Changer, bringing to you episode two of the Happiness Hit series. Today we're joined by Polly Dukes, who's a stay sober empowerment coach, and she is a happiness expert that um, I'm going to interview today with you to bring you hope inspiration so that you may access the gateway to transformation so hi polly good to have you here today hi thank you very much for asking me super super excited to be on here with you yeah and it's really really great because i know Polly, you've been on your own personal journey as we all have with regards to happiness so um so we're going to start today i'm going to ask you a really general question um which you can answer in whichever way you want but what do you believe about happiness Oh, oh, good starting point. Good question. Okay. Um, it's multidimensional. It's right. not just kind of happy. You know, it, I think a lot of emotions are mixed into it. Um, a lot of kind of state of mind is mixed into it. And it sounds so simple, like just be happy. <laughs> just be happy. It's like, okay, how do I turn that switch happy on? You know, yeah. where's my instruction manual for like being a human being? It's like, yeah. uh, this is actually quite tricky. So, and when you are on the kind of journey yourself it's like you know you there's lots of things you can use to create a state of happiness yeah um, but once that substance or that experience has kind of got subsided you're left with you know your base level whatever yeah. that is um so to be able to find true authentic happiness that kind of ignites and fills your soul and lights you up yeah is yeah definitely a journey that I've been on so yeah absolutely. and you know um obviously you can share what you want to here today um uh with regards to your journey how would you how would you perceive your journey to happiness if that makes sense I mean you can share what you want with the audience here you know and it's up to you entirely yeah for a long time I thought happy people were fake I thought right. they, they were all happy and bouncy and then behind the clip behind the doors they were like shutting the door and just go back to being really miserable and lazy <laughs> and not lazy, like unmotivated and, and dull. And, you know, I just thought they must be exhausted. Like happy people <laughs> are so exhausted and they're doing all these things. And my brain couldn't comprehend it because I spent most of my life kind of doing fake happiness, you know, like yeah. put this mask on, put this persona on of kind of like really, you know, people would, not, you know, people who I talk to now about my journey, they were like, really? God, you were so smiley and you always chatted and you always came across. And it's like, yeah, I made myself, you know, because it was the polar opposite of how I was actually feeling internally. And I was mm. the person who went home, shut the door, you know, when the kids were in bed or whatever. And I'd just be really sad, you know, just. Yeah you know, really unhappy in who I was and, um, you know, how I felt about myself. Okay. And so obviously, you know, you recognise that now looking back, what do you think the turning point was for you when you decided to either get help or do something about it or what, yeah, what changed for you to understand that things could be different? Oh, good question. It was when I started my personal development journey and I started kind of mm. looking at some books and I'd had coaching myself and mm. things were a little bit more um, comprehensible. You're like, oh, I, I have a choice. You're like, what? Yeah. Really? Like, you know, <laughs> like just literally like, it blew my mind. I was like, I yeah. have a choice. And I think it really kind of implemented through my, I had a lot of counseling and that yeah. kind of, it, it helped to a level to help me process. And I think it's brilliant. Mm. But the coaching takes things to a whole new level. It starts to kind mm. of really shake up your foundations. And you can start to put into play the programming that you actually want. And it's like, oh, my God, I have a choice in this. Really? Yeah. And it's like, by knowing that, it doesn't just wave a magic wand and then you can just do it. So <laughs> that's like, you know, it takes work. It takes practice because yeah. you didn't create happen. You know, you didn't become who you are overnight. So you can't kind of shift and change immediately. But by yeah. having the awareness, you can then tap into like, OK, I know what's happening here. Oh, I've got some tools that I can use to kind of help me get out of this mm. as well so and then when I started doing my own coach training we obviously went yeah. into a lot more depth there mm. and um it all started to kind of the bits started to piece together and I was like oh wow and for me in particular um I thought wine made me happy I thought it made me you know the, yeah 
the star of the night and the hostess of the mostess and mm -hmm. the funniest. Um, and it wasn't until I kind of came back to each problem and looking at the solution of yeah. why things were happening the way that they were. And every kind of route back kind of went back to wine. And I was like, yeah. oh, I thought <laughs> wine was helping. Oh, yeah. right, okay. And it was definitely giving me that roller coaster of the fake happiness and then the yeah. crashes and the anxiety um, yeah. and just feeling that shame and remorse. And, and that was like eating mm -hmm. away at all of my natural happiness. And I kind of, yeah. once I kind of decided that wine wasn't a great thing, both of my parents were alcoholics and I kind of had seen it and experienced it and was like, I don't want to be like that. So I mm -hmm. knew the slippery slope I was going down. And I think, you know, we did exercises throughout our coaching where how would life be like in five years, 10 years, even a year. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. And how would life be like that without the wine kind of going forward yeah. in life? And I was kind of at that crossroads and I knew that just needed to go. It wasn't helpful. It wasn't healthy. Right. Um, but then you take away what you think makes you happy and you actually have yeah. to really learn yeah. <laughs> what actually really does make you happy, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Definitely. There's so much like comparison out there as well. Like I came across like comparison as the thief of joy and it's something that I've really, really held on to and worked mm. through a lot of clients as well, because F lots of people think happiness is like a destination. When I get there, yeah. I'll be happy. <laughs> So you're like yeah yeah okay but what about on the way <laughs> you know can we make yeah. it happen, like along the way rather than that making that the destination and I really yeah. believe it's learning to enjoy the journey which sounds so yeah. cheesy and so cheesy um but no, I agree. enjoy the journey along the way and then you you know when you do get there it's you reap other rewards potentially yeah. um yeah. And it is very much like that and I think you know for me especially it's looking at wins as well like each yes. night I'll write down daily wins and kind of you know yeah. that um really helps towards focusing your mind on more kind of positivity yeah gratitude and kindness is phenomenal for me I yeah doing yeah. things for others always takes the focus off yourself and that kind of giving yeah. Um, and what uh, what would you do? I mean that I mean I'm you we, we've talked about this before haven't yeah, we? It's yeah. Very powerful. So I mean if, if someone's watching this right now and um, there's a couple of things I want to pull from this because what you've given us here is amazing, amazing content. So thank you. But oh, thank you. Things, I'm thinking that there's so much going on in my head right now. But oh, the first you. thing I want to go back to before we go too far is uh, about having a choice, you know, mm. because I, I really believe that there'll be somebody watching this right now going, I, I have a choice. What do you mean I have a choice, you know? And I can feel people watching this and feeling those feelings. And it's just like, you know, what would you say to those people who are getting a bit of a stirring of emotion thinking... I have a choice with regards to happiness. Yeah. What would be your advice be? I'm mull on it because yeah. I was, I was, I heard it and it took me a long time to get my head around. And then I was pretty angry, to be honest. Yeah. I was like, what do you mean I have a choice? You know, this is how yeah. I'm feeling. This is my emotions. Yes. This yeah. is what's happened to me in the past, you know, um, and quite hurt. And, and it was a process in itself for acceptance mm -hmm. and then go, and then the curiosity, well, well, how do you mean about that? Well, how do I do this? How, yeah. do, how can I? And I think once that bomb has kind of gone off in your head, yeah. um, you're a bit, it opens up, you know, almost like a bomb's gone off and it, it gets rid of the block yeah. and it opens up, you know, parts of light from the darkness where you're like, yeah. okay, well, I, I want to know more about this. I want yeah. to be curious. So um mm. yeah you're going to I think to, yeah go speak to a coach <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go speak to a coach or start you know researching it yourself there's there's tons and tons of amazing books out there yeah. and even with YouTube now I know mm. Maria's got her own channel which is absolutely amazing mm. um with YouTube and it's just letting yourself be exposed to the possibility um yeah. and yeah just yeah. get curious get really, really it, it's curious. really it's really strange it's like um I didn't know that you had this kind of moment before you know we've sort of talked to stuff a lot I know but you know you said this kind of like this bomb going off in your head and I had that I had that same experience when I yeah. suddenly realized that anything is possible with the right mindset and it was like it was exactly like that that bomb going off and you know I think um anybody can experience that can't they in a really positive oh, way definitely. and definitely. it's like a whole new world opens up and um yeah and I like the way you talk about curiosity, get really curious about where this could lead, you know, and I mean, um, how different is your life because you had that moment? Unbelievable. Yeah, it was kind of the catalyst of so much more as well. Yeah. 
it was learning to implement it and also you know we what how old was I mm. kind of 30s I'm now 41 so it was like in your 30s when you've lived up to your point of being 30 I've yeah. kind of going well this is the way I'm going to think this is the way I'm going to feel and this is where I'm going to behave for the rest of my life you yes. know yeah and that was a pretty bleak outlook you yeah. know <laughs> looking forward and I was like life is hard life is you know yeah. challenge you know it was an exhausting um experience to be living you know because yeah. I was having to put on all this fake persona I was yeah, having yeah. to kind of suppress all my emotions because it was just mm. way too scary to even yeah. let anything out. Um, and, you know, that's where kind of wine came in, where it just helped to suppress everything, numb everything yeah. out and enabled me to kind of cope and also get um, a period of escape from, you know, my own thoughts and my feelings. It gave yeah. me a little bit of a respite. But obviously, you know, four o'clock in the morning, it's like, oh, God, how much did you drink? Really? Did you need to? And the conversation yeah. start. And the next morning, it's like you said you weren't going to drink last night. You know, so you're, you're on that back yeah. foot of shame and, you know, this horrible repeating yeah. pattern. So yeah. um, the kind of the two went hand in hand. It was a bit like, well, without the wine, well, how do I do life? And how how yeah. how will I ever be happy without wine? It's yeah. like, it was yeah. so ingrained in me, this fake happiness. Yeah. And they, uh, I, I had to effort, yeah. so much effort in to, to be, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. And I think what you're talking about here, isn't it? It's like, you know, when you stop drinking, who am I without the wine? And I know many people go through that, don't they? Because yeah. like you say, you know, we believe things like wine and alcohol or working lots of hours will bring us happiness. And, you know, we, we've all, you know, we've all been through times we've had a crutch to keep us going. And but actually those external things never bring us happiness because we both know that happiness has to come from within here. And what have you learned about yourself um, and your ability to be happy along the way? that is okay to throw a self-pity party you yeah. don't have to be happy it doesn't have to be rainbows and unicorns forever it's you know <laughs> I think when I first came with the coach and I kind of came out and I was like everything's got to be positive you know I can't say anything I can't moan I can't this I can't that and it's like we all have a choice but we're all humans as well at the end of the day and we all have a yeah. range of emotions you know that go from here right the way over to there yeah. so yeah. And I think because I was queen of kind of suppressing emotions, I was guilt. I was guilty into doing that as well. So yeah. it's okay to have a self pity party. You can do tissues and full on snot and chocolate and whatever <laughs> you need, but not staying there. Yeah, but picking yeah. yourself up and either getting out, getting in the fresh air, putting some yeah. music on, yeah. um, you know, jumping around, anything to kind of change the chemicals that's in your body. Yeah, to yeah. give you that kind of quick start. You know, yeah. to change your state. So by that, I mean, like change your state of mind yes. and you can have that ability. You do have that choice to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, and believing as well for a long time, I was like, oh, you know, yeah, D just not believing it was ever, ever possible um, yeah. and doubting it before I'd even really kind of tried or got right. into it or got some tried and trust tried and trusted techniques as well. Yeah. So because my whole system was so cynical yeah because it had been ingrained for so long yeah and that change although it was a positive change was absolutely terrifying because right. I'd existed up until that point of being how I was yeah you know, and our brains are very good at going oh don't do change because what yeah. you did yesterday kept you alive yeah so change is not good so it always want to kind of revert me back to how I was before yeah. But you have to be stronger than that and go, actually, what I want is there in the future. And I want to yeah. be thinking, feeling and behaving in a different way. So it's having yeah. the power and the belief to know, continue to do what you were doing. And that will become your new go to behavior yes. in a positive yeah. way. And you will reap the benefits from that. And your brain yeah. will then slowly get used to that. Oh, no, stay in, stay that way, because that's what keeps you alive. Yes. So, yeah. But it takes all this, you know, if you want to get into the science of it, it takes a long time to build up all these connected neurons between yeah. your nervous system and your brain and your body yeah um to be able to do it so it's that consistency and that repetition yes. and that belief that it is possible yeah. to go to go forward in the direction that you want to yeah. but your you know your brain you know it's as magnificent as it is you know it often works against us and yeah. that's really hard you know yeah and as well as other kind of settings within our yeah but don't you feel like, I mean, because yes, absolutely, it's, it's consistency, isn't it, that helps us change. And um, 
I think that gets to, I mean, from my experience, I don't know, you, you might experience this differently, but one, once you've practiced and practiced and practiced, there eventually gets a point like you were talking about where it almost becomes normal for you to implement those tools and those strategies and to experience more happiness and a higher level of happiness probably on a daily basis. And, you know, and, and I don't remember experiencing that exact time where it shifted over for me personally, mm. but I know that it felt really good when I got there, if that makes sense. And, um, yeah. and did you, did you experience something like that? Was it a gradual thing for you as well? Or did you wake up one day and suddenly realize that you had kind of made significant changes? You know, how was it for you? It was definitely a gradual process for me, I think. Mm. And it was very much tied in, you know, with the alcohol. It was each day I hadn't drunk alcohol. And yeah. I learned to be like me and my own authentic self. I was stronger. Yeah. I was braver. I was more positive. I liked myself more. Yeah. Um, I was happier as a result because I was making steps to the person that I, the version of myself that I wanted to be. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of learning, learning exactly like that identity piece, isn't it? It's like learning who I am without the alcohol and every day that gets a little bit stronger. So in each yeah. milestone I hit, it was like, wow, yes, I can do yeah. this. You've got the belief. You've got the evidence. Yeah. You've got the proof you're looking around everything is so much better it's like yes. okay so right I can do this yeah and it was yeah. definitely gradual and I think the levels of happiness now like you said are so much higher yeah but they're more um I'm trying to think of the word they're not short-lived they're there's so much more longevity to them yes. because they're so much more from you right like exactly like you said from you mm. rather than anything external so yeah. it, you know, there's a deep level of satisfaction a deep level of you know happiness because yeah. it's come from you you've created it yeah rather than something like a quick win or mm. um something you know that you've done that you can immediately change you know yeah. change I something like buying something or yeah. ordering something or drinking something or eating something or yeah you know it's it's not attached to that tangible object it's something that's no. within you that you can yeah. access and yeah, absolutely you. yeah and I mean that you know also if we're talking you know we were you were saying earlier you know, about the choice thing again and um I know that you've w worked with a lot of people um like I have with who have been through really difficult times you know and I know we've both been on our own journeys like I said so we've been through those times as well and um I think a lot of people believe that if something bad has happened to them in childhood or if they've been through something very traumatic, that that will um, affect their life for the rest of their life. But I'm a great fan of the phrase, you know, um, adversity doesn't break you, it makes you. And I believe that we have, with the right help, um, we can look back at our past and turn that pain into power. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Completely. Um, and for those of you who don't know my past, um, both, I touched on it earlier, both of my parents are alcoholics um I was uh, you know suffered all forms of abuse mostly yeah, from yeah. my parents and you know the people that they were with um yeah kind of feral yeah. child upbringing my mum um killed herself when I was eight so mm -hmm. that kind of left my elderly dad not really having a clue with um mm -hmm. with me so I was left to kind of fend and bring up myself and then eventually he put me in hospital for the last time and I ended up in foster care which for me was brilliant. It was what I needed and what helped me, you know, yeah. understand about love and care and nurture, you yeah. know, your basic fundamental human needs, you know, safety, yeah. security. Things like that. So I had these kind of building blocks that I could build on. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And I can look back with acceptance and peace mm. because, and forgiveness, not that they deserve any forgiveness, but because I deserve you know freedom yeah. I deserve peace of mind and yeah. I can look back and I'm grateful for everything that happened yeah. because it made me the person I am today yeah. and I can help people who have been through similar things yeah. in their life because yeah. I've walked that walk you know and it and it's by walking that walk I've got so much more empathy so much more understanding yeah. and also I, I hope that I bring hope to other people because yeah. I was that exact person it's like I was in victim mentality. It was like, mm -hmm. so much has happened to me. You know, I've been made to feel like a worthless piece of crap. Yeah, That's what yeah. I am. And this is what I'm going to be thinking, mm -hmm. feeling and behaving forever in my life. So therefore, mm -hmm. what's the point? You know, I was that person. Yeah. Coaching really helped. And, you know, through my training has really helped me to understand mm -hmm. that there is that choice. 
So I hope, you know, I hope that I'm like a little bit of a lighthouse. It's like, oh my God, I never knew you went through all that sort of stuff. So I'm like, yeah, I did. They're like, God, you're like, you know, uh, know, they're blown away. They're like, so far, you're normal. You're you're lovely. You're, uh, you know, so I'm like, okay. Yeah, it's possible. It's completely possible. I hope to be that lighthouse kind of shining light out and talking about this stuff. And so it gives other people the permission to talk about it as well yeah absolutely Um, and you are such walking talking proof you're such walking talking proof that you can go through really really tough times I mean what you went through you know you wouldn't wish that upon any child would you but you went through some really tough times and like you say that really made you question who you are for a very long time but you completely turned around and I want and I'm sure you want the same Polly anybody is watching this who is thinking right now that my life is limited I'm going to be unhappy forever because of what happened to me you know you do have a choice like Polly says you know and sometimes it's just reaching out isn't it and speaking to the right person um opening up and and you know there's also and I remember going through this and I think you did as well that there's a time when you know all these emotions are inside but you're too afraid to open up um and you know I think I thought there was a book by Louise Hay saying you you can heal your life and that I bought that at a really low point I remember opening up the first three pages. I could not even deal with reading those words. You know, it just felt like it was opening me and it was too raw and too painful. Um, But I know that I got through that as you did as well. I mean, what advice would you give to someone who's feeling that right now, listening to your words? They want to get better. They want to feel happy, but they're feeling really scared about opening up and and I guess showing vulnerability. Yeah, definitely. And it's almost, it's understanding that it will get better. But at yeah. that at the time of you doing it, it you know it's very very uncomfortable, and that's okay. Yeah. This uncom- these uncomfortable feelings and all the emotions mm-hmm. that need to come out is a very very short period of your yeah. life as well. Yeah. And I didn't want to you know I had a big thing about perfectionism, so mm-hmm. I didn't dare tell anybody about how I was thinking, feeling, and you know I just did. I should be an actress, really. So yeah. <laughs> fantastic job of like hiding it all and being so yeah. functional and um you know meeting all the needs all the milestones and everything I needed to do like in adulting yeah um, no one really knew the full depth of what was going on no. you know within me I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror because I hated myself so much yeah. was, you know and I often thought people would be better off without me because mm. I just saw you know a waste of space so and just honestly if this is resonating with you in any way shape or form it's you know it's not true it really mm. isn't true mm. um you are not a product of what's happened to you in your life mm. you are not your thoughts and i know at the moment mm. that seems like a really crazy um you know the, these thoughts we have mm. you know eighty thousand thoughts a day you know the ones mm. that we're aware of are the strongest because they're the mo- they're the ones that have been on habit and have been yeah. on loop as well and you yeah. are not your thought either yeah. this is just kind of building on mm. potentially what's happened and and all of that can be changed um yeah and it, yeah it is a really really scary process mm. but it's so so worth it mm. um yeah honestly and you know you are loved more than yeah. you ever ever realized and you are stronger yeah. and more yeah. forceful than you ever ever thought yeah and, and you know, know I'm, well enough, yeah. I'm well enough to be here, Polly, because you are just shining so brightly on the screen and it's just amazing, you know, and just to hear you say what you've been through and to see what you're doing now and helping others as a result of what you've been through. And, you know, you not only have actually, you know, been through the whole really traumatic time, you've turned it around, but you've also risen the bar, you know, raised the bar, sorry, you know, you, as, as in the fact that you're actually using what you've been through now to help others. So, you know, you're not just back to a normal life, you're back to a higher life, you know, which is quite inspirational. And um, and I'm hoping that anybody watching this is seeing, you know, that that is totally possible too, is to... Is well, to you um, like, set me off as well. And it's like, uh, that's <laughs> not why I do it at all. It's like, I just want everybody to know, you know, yeah. especially people that have been through similar things. It's like, it's not their fault. You know, the people yeah. around them were the broken ones. You know, yeah. there's nothing wrong with you. For a long time, I thought I was you know, an F up or mm. I was damaged. I was, um, you know, broken property. I was, yeah. And it was never, it was never me. It was yeah. always the people around me. And for so long, I thought it was all my fault. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I think having shifts like that, it kind of makes you go, oh, okay. It's like having light bulb moments. It's like, yeah. oh, okay, right. <laughs> how you know I understand the what now 
now I need to work out how do I so yes. and that's yeah. that's where you need you know the help yeah. and the support to get through and I think what you said then was, you know, was a really valid point is that, you know, we make a mistake of believing things about ourselves based on our experiences, you know, so I get, you know, if, if a parent leaves us, then maybe we think we're not enough to be loved, you know, if someone bullies us at secondary school, then maybe we believe the bully, but actually we do the best we can at the time with the knowledge and the resources that we've got. But, you know, sometimes we get it wrong. Sometimes we actually make up these stories about ourselves based on other people saying or doing things to us but these stories aren't true and they have no they are not uh, a true reflection of our of ourselves if that makes sense and I think that's really powerful isn't it understanding that what we're telling ourselves about ourselves often isn't true definitely yeah and having somebody point that out who's not yeah. a friend not a um, member of the family or not uh, an employer you know it's like mm. whoa okay that yeah. is, is really crucial in it as well so yeah and like you say, it's quite a moment, isn't it? When you realise that thing, when you realise those things aren't true, because you've been believing these things, like you were saying, you believed you were crap for years, if that makes yeah. sense, you know? Yeah. And actually some one day you realised that you weren't. And that's like, whoa. And it's like, it's a yeah. new territory, isn't it? But actually it's a new territory that you've, you've explored and and obviously, uh, you know, found massive happiness in, which is amazing. And um, just before we finish, what I'd like to talk to you about as well is something you brought up earlier, which I'll have a backtrack into, and that was like the kindness. And I know you're a huge fan of kindness. And tell me how big a part kindness plays in your life. How big a part? Yeah, I try and do like random acts of kindness and yeah. try and just generally come from a place of love and try and yeah. be kind as well. You know, even things like you know, my husband and I having a discussion, and I'm like, okay, you know. <laughs> version of I am I operating from now it's like once you yeah. see this stuff you can't yeah. not see this stuff and it could yeah. be a real pain in the ass sometimes but sometimes <laughs> it's really really helpful as well so and so I'm like okay I'm operating from like the ego version of myself or you know the, the previous per version of myself or yeah. from a place of love and understanding and kindness yeah. and you know it's like quite often you know I try and go to the love I'm not all the time because you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm a human being I'm a perfect <laughs> perfectly imperfect person it's like I will try and so to operate my business my life you know even my driving I will try and do it from a place of love and kindness you know and I'm really appreciative when somebody lets me out at a junction you know because yeah. it's like, thank you so much you know that I'm really really gratitude yeah. grat you know, grateful for kind things like that you know um just everyone being a little bit more considerate everyone being a little bit more thoughtful everyone yeah. just um, opening up their mind a little bit more and yeah. a little, being a little bit more inclusive and I think yes. I absolutely loved it you know in lockdown when people were looking after neighbours and communities came and villages came together and they were opening you know little Facebook pages and it was yeah. checking out the number here and does anyone need this and you know like people were putting things on their driveway like free it's like oh yeah. my god it's amazing you know it didn't yeah. last very long now it's like no. so -so parked here how dare they and it's yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know. <laughs> in well, that, that time you know it's just like yeah. people together yeah um and just and you early you said about um as well you said about when we when we're kind to other people it changes the focus yeah. um I know where you're coming from but tell you know tell the audience you know more about this because I, I think you know we're both believing this strongly don't we so yeah yeah definitely it's it fills you up in ways that you can't imagine and it's yeah it, it's like a it's a feeling and I don't do it for any other reason mm. apart from it's like a doing it is nice you know it's nice morals it's nice values you know it, it's kind of the authentic version of yourself mm. doing doing the actual you know being kind you know yeah, and, and yeah. trying to operate from a place of kindness and yeah. then on the on the you get bonuses as a result of that because you do something somebody acknowledges it or you or you don't know but you've still done it but you get this sense of like fulfillment you know yeah. in yeah. a way that you can't buy in a way that doesn't come from anything else so that's always a bonus as well isn't it you know even yeah. little things like paying somebody a compliment and they're like yeah. oh thanks or even I know it's hard at the moment with masks yeah um, you know smiling at somebody but really smiling like holding the eye contact and smiling um you know paying attention to somebody I know we're also guilty at like you know looking down and being on our phones you know and I, I yeah. try and put my you know if I'm out and about 
in a queue somewhere, you know, I'll, I'll be the person that would chat to somebody about their dog or yeah, yeah. You know, just pass time a day with people. And, you yeah. know, and generally, you know, it's really well received as yeah. well. So it's That's just good. connecting, having this like level of connection and being, you know, treating another human how you would like to be yeah. treated. Yeah. So, um, and then round about to kindness, you just don't know, do you? No, so you just exactly. kind of do things that you don't see it, but what the hope is that they will be on the receiving end of a kindness yeah. act, act and that they will carry that around they will feel good about this and you yes. might think somebody has had a really awful terrible terrible day and it could be you know that moment where they've just had that boost or they just feel a little bit better about life and yeah. you know and hopefully it has a ripple effect so then they're passing that on well, I had this kind Absolutely. act done to me and so therefore they've kind of been kind and they're more likely to be kind to somebody else and on a chemical level you know you get big hits of dopamine and serotonin which are free yeah. chemicals so you feel good and they yeah. feel good and it just yeah. has a natural kind of self-perpetuating movement yeah. you know and I, and I think you know now given what we're going through the pandemic I think you know creating random acts of kindness for other people is a massive tonic for everybody isn't it because not only do we lift others we lift ourselves as well and you know like you say we never do the acts of kindness for any benefit for ourselves but we get a bonus we feel better as well so yeah. anybody watching this if you're having a tough time right now go out and serve others you know and do something kind for somebody today um, yeah. because you will feel these little shots of happiness won't you Polly you'll just get yeah. calm you feel so much better and like Polly says you're actually changing your body chemistry by doing these things and that's really powerful yeah. there's so. science behind it it's all very well kind of having memes and cliches and yeah. sayings and it and I was like yeah but that's just words you know I am yeah biggest critic and the biggest cynic out there <laughs> and so I need the science and I need to have like the whole picture so I yeah. can make an informed choice and that's part of my belief system and then I'm like okay yeah I believe this and then I will adapt it and then enforce it and then I need the evidence to prove yeah and like, oh okay this all works this is yeah. good right this is part of my belief system and then on we go so yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing it's amazing you know so yeah um go out there and create some random acts of kindness today change your body chemistry feel better that's a nice advice from Polly and myself yeah it works doesn't it Polly it every does. Time. It does. Yeah. <laughs> and um Polly before we finish you know um I would like you to speak from your heart like you have been doing actually but uh, to anybody watching this right now that's going through a tough time that wants a change that has no well little hope at the moment maybe they can live a better life if you were speaking directly to those people right now what would you like to say okay she tricky isn't it without the whole kind of dynamics of sort of sick. I mean yeah. everybody at the moment is feeling it there's not one person mm. that's not affected by COVID mm. so know that you're not alone as well yeah. you reach into your heart mm. and and identify what what it is that you need because you generally know like deep in your heart what it is mm -hmm. that would help you individually because we're all completely unique as well so there's not one blanket kind of approach that could potentially mm -hmm. work like for you so but you generally have the answers within you yourself and it's it'd be niggling away at you and it's it's maybe a time for you to listen to that um and I think you know, things have had to slow down and things have got a little bit quieter and that voice that may have been whispering at you or may have been shouting is mm -hmm. now probably screaming so yeah. you've probably got you're running around a little bit less you're you've got a little bit more time potentially that you are you can get more in tune with this and on the flip side I think there's a split isn't there there's you know the key workers and and yeah. lots of people everything's being piled on them yeah, you know, yeah. probably you know, they're probably their body's kind of whispering it's like a shouting and screaming it's like slow yeah. down slow yeah. down and it's okay to ask for help it's okay because I know yes. a lot of people at the moment especially that have worked all through lockdown and still working and then obviously yeah. with things that are changing with being furloughed not furlough schemes the ones that have been steady throughout seem to have been had more and more put on them yeah it's like it's okay to say do you know what <laughs> you know yeah. this is probably my level now yeah. you know, where I get ill sick or break down it's can I have some help? So it's, you know, that's for me kind of looking out in. Yeah. You probably, if you're in the fast lane, yeah. you're probably kind of going, I need a break, I need a break. This is yeah. things are on top of me now. It's it's making that happen in some yeah. way, shape, shape or form, you know, addressing your needs, you know, in a constructive way. So you get them met before, you know, 
with yeah. human you're human at the end of the day great advice you're human and i think you know everybody's human like polly's saying well everybody's experiencing stuff right even coaches we've been experiencing stuff you know oh my god yeah we went for a double yeah. the other day and it was we like know, we, know, we did <laughs> we're trying to navigate our way through this and help yeah. and serve as well and then with uh, different dynamics down dynamics that were going on yeah. um and then we as coaches swiftly moved the conversation of would you done that would you have done that in in covid would you? no that's a bonus no. <laughs> We managed to kind yeah. of take it back. That was quite impressive. Yeah. So yeah, no, uh, great words. We're all human, you know, and everybody's going to do something right now. And um, yeah. yeah, and you know, your words, Polly, today have been definitely hopeful for people. They've been inspirational. And I really pray, you know, and I'm sure people will, even if it's one person, if it's five people, 10 people, more people who listen to your words and you know just maybe make one change you know this this interview will have been worth it won't it you know because yeah. you know all it takes is just a, a bit of a light bulb moment in our minds to say actually we can live a better life no matter what and you are like i say walking talking proof of that so oh, uh, so polly so uh, <laughs> if if anybody wants to contact you to find out more about the work that you do um where's the best place for them to contact you or to see you know your website obviously yeah my website i guess that's kind of got everything that links off that so that's just um www.pollydukes.com okay brilliant that's great well thank you very much for your time polly it's been very inspirational and um yeah i'm looking forward to catching up soon oh thank you so much